Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is the Quran Reloaded, and we're back to do a reaction video. Oh god, this one uh, sent to me by YouTube user. If I can find it, it's on the screen. Because I, I forgot. Nice. Thanks though, person. Uh, this is, and we can't put it in the title, of course. Uh, uh, because we will get restricted into fucking oblivion. But this is about rape. This is about why why you can or cannot get away with rape in Islam. And oh, oh boy. Oh fucking boy. This is put on by, uh, uh, Dr. Zakir Naik, I believe? Question. Doctor? Did yes. we did we check what his doctorate was in? Is it in like something like Islamic studies, or is he actually no? Like... But I will guarantee it is in in, in Islamic <laughs> studies. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's no way I can sugarcoat this. I can't lube you up. We're going in dry. Here's here's our Islam rape video. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Azab, chapter number thirty-three, verse number fifty-nine. Oh Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters, and the believing women, that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, they should put on the jilbab. Okay, so here are the different types of coverings women uh, wear in the Muslim world. There's the jilbab, which he just mentioned. This one's kind of a, a, a biz cash thing, business casual. The face is open, but we make sure we don't derail the board meeting by seeing some sexy, sexy elbow skin. Next, we have the hijab or kimar which is kind of like laying around the house in your boxers, but for your head. Uh, this makes sure that your wife can make you a sandwich without being overcome by sexual urges directed towards her ears and or hairline. You have no idea how rapey I get when I see a sexy, hot pair of bangs. And then there's the burqa, which is what we like to call in the biz, the erection deflector. Basically impossible to rape through the thin fabric of the cloak, and you can't tell where the woman's eyes are, so she has a better chance of juking you in the alley and running to her house, where she'll most certainly be beaten when she reports the attempted rape to her husband. But as they say, better to be beaten by your husband for almost getting sexually assaulted than getting stoned to death after successfully getting raped. It has more flow in the original Arabic, though, so, like, don't, don't judge me, you fucking Islamophobes. So that they shall be recognized, and it will prevent them from being molested. Because as we all know, rapists, well, troublemakers who don't listen to a verbal no, definitely respond to non-verbal clothing no's. Quran says, hijab has been prescribed for the women, so that they shall be recognized, and it will prevent them from being molested. You know, I I've never known a scarf to, to ward off rapists, but t to be fair, I, I don't rape women. Jake, have you considered saying you don't rape women kind of implies you maybe rape men? Yes, it does. Okay, so what I'm hearing from you is we should have put a big sign on the Twin Towers that says, like, hey, please don't hit with plane slash planes. I'd like to ask you a question. Let's suppose two twin sisters who are very beautiful, who are equally beautiful, if they are walking down the streets of Dubai. We should, we should make sure they aren't speaking to each other or looking at other men? No, no. no. Sh should we claim them both as our wives? Will you, will you let me- Do we notice they have sexy bangs? And if one twin sister, she's wearing the Islamic hijab, the complete body covered, except the face and the hands up to the wrist, and the other twin sister, she's wearing the western clothes, the mini skirts or shorts. Well, one thing is for sure, the one in the shorts is gonna be way more comfortable in a fucking desert. Imagine wearing a goddamn blanket in a desert. No wonder people blow themselves up there, it's just to escape the sandy hellscape they live in. And if both of them are walking down the streets in Dubai, along the Cornish, and if on the side there is a ruffian who's waiting for a catch. A ruffian ready for a catch? This is a rape, not a Benny Hill sketch. Maybe the rape takes place in 1920s Queens. 
Charlie Chaplin must have been like the king of rapes. Just, oh, that... He makes a bunch of rapists sound like they just wait outside the woods, outside the castle keep, waiting for a carriage to stroll by that they can ransack. He makes rapists sound like the first enemies you come up against in a video game that are hard at first, but by, like, level five, you're killing them like crabs. I'm asking the question, which girl will it tease? Will it tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab, or will it tease the girl wearing the western clothes, the mini skirts are short? Who the fuck cares? Like, if Jake and I are walking down the street, and there's a hooligan in the bushes, waiting with his period-accurate medieval flail, as you do. Now... This is a Wednesday walk, so of course Jake is in some basketball shorts and a t-shirt while I happen to be wearing my full set of plate mail armor. Now, flail guy, probably gonna attack Jake, but I'm not gonna be like, fair game bro, should've worn your armor. I mean, any rapist worth his salt would choose the one in the blanket. No way she can run as fast as the girl in the athletic wear and Nikes. Now... Maybe if you're a veteran rapist and desire more of a challenge, you go with the Fitbit wearing hot yoga girl in yoga pants and let the blanket lady go. Plus, I mean, you don't want to be midway through a rape and find out the burker lady is an uggo. How embarrassing would that be? Then all your friends are going to make fun of you for raping a three when there was a soft eight just right in front of you. Now you really got egg on your face. Which girl will it is? Which girl? You can tell which one's a rapist because they clapped at that. That's not a joke. It's a serious analyzation of the people in this crowd. Isn't that depressing? Analyzation sounds like a rape act. But natural, the girl wearing the western clothes. The mini skirts are short. If you're inviting, then you'll receive. Since he's inviting us to do something, can I invite him to stop pretending to be authority on anything other than wearing suits that are too big for you? Also, is he basically threatening rapes now? Also, this guy right here? That guy's definitely enthusiastic about rapes. And after this, if anyone rapes any woman, the Islamic Sharia says death penalty. Many non-Muslims will say, death penalty in this age of 21st century, Islam is a barbaric religion. It's a ruthless law. Yeah, guys, we're just telling women why they deserve the rape they got. Why do they keep calling us backwards? Fucking idiot. But when I ask this question, and I've asked this question to thousands of non-Muslims, that suppose, God forbid, someone rapes your mother. Nothing. Clearly she deserved it. Your mom's a slut. I mean, she didn't wear the blanket. Or someone rapes your sister. And if you are made the judge, and the rapist is brought in front of you, what punishment will you give him? Believe me, all of them said, 100%, we will put him to death. Some went to the extreme of saying, we will torture him to death. And as we all know, the great justice systems in history have always favored retribution of the individual and not some sort of societal justice. Good job, guy. I can tell your doctorate isn't in history, uh, or anything involving... You know what? No, I don't know what your doctorate's in. I don't care. You're a fucking rape weirdo. And I, and I mean, that guy might be on team rape, but I, I'm certainly not on team rape. Uh, but that guy just said that Islam isn't barbaric, and then said, hey, we should torture people to death, and then the crowd clapped. I'll just play it again for you, because it speaks for itself. Went to the extreme of saying, we will torture him to death. So someone rapes your mother, your wife, your sister, you want to put him to death. Someone rapes somebody else's mother, somebody else's sister, you say, death penalty, barbaric law. Why these double standards? It's not a double standard to understand why someone feels a certain way emotionally, like wanting to kill someone who raped someone they are close to, while also recognizing that's not something we should allow as a society. It's not my fault you're such a self-centered asshole, you fail to acknowledge the distinction. And do you know, America, USA, which happens to be the most advanced country in the world, do you know it has one of the highest rates of rape in the world? The country which has one of the highest rate of rape in the world is USA. Uh, he's, he's right. The United States is 10th on the list of rapes per 100,000 people. Uh, but consider this. Muslim countries rarely report rapes, and many times the victim is sent to jail or worse, 
for adultery or fornication. So the United States may be the 10th most rapey country on the planet, or, and I'm betting this is the case, it has the 10th most reported rapes. Because as we all know, and there's famous cases, especially in like Saudi Arabia, that lady got gang raped, and she had to get lashes, and she had a rape baby, and she tried to abort it, and they wouldn't let her. She got five years in prison and like 400 lashes. Yeah, that's bullshit. There's actually, uh, in statistics, there's a lot of stuff like this. When you're looking at any statistic, this is why you need to look at it critically and understand how they got to where they got. For instance, there are Nordic countries, I forget which, which ones, probably Sweden and shit, I don't know. But countries that are generally looked on favorably, the ones with, like, high education, high, uh, you know, uh, health, all that shit. But they also happen to have really, really high rape rates. So a lot of the times, for instance, uh, some alt-right people or whatever will say, oh, see, Sweden, whatever, is not so great. Look at all the fucking rapes. And and it turns out, uh, whatever fucking country it is, I don't even know. But uh, they have one of the highest rape reporting rates in the world, uh, in part due to how they report it. They report each individual case. For instance, if someone rapes you multiple times, or it's someone you know, or it's like a marital rape, they count each one individually. And they just overall have higher reporting rates. So, I don't right, know. Because they're more progressive on that front, yeah. and decided to be pro proactive towards it. Yeah, so... Basically, fuck you, but uh, with your consent. According to the FBI statistics of 1990, every day, 1,756 cases of rape took place. According to the statistics of U.S. Department of Justice, in 1996, every day, 2,713 cases of rape took place. Maybe the Americans got bold, bolder. In six years' time, they got more bold. He's right. We need to follow Middle Eastern examples. You can't rape what you own. If you calculate every 32 second, one rape is taking place in America. You know, we are here in this auditorium for the past one and a half hour. Already 150 rapes may have taken place in USA till the time we are here. Okay, this is patently false. Here are some independent reports done within the country of Pakistan, which borders India and where Zakir Naik likes to preach. This was just page one of Google. Again, the issue here is reporting rapes by the victims, which are disincentivized to do so. Both India and Pakistan have terrible histories of rape. So much so that rape in Pakistan has its own Wikipedia page. And in 1979, Pakistan passed a law called H Hadood Ordinance that made the victims of rape criminals against the state and an independent study by the Human Rights Watch indicated that in 1992, female victims of rape oftentimes met even more physical and sexual abuse by police in the event of their reporting the original rape. So basically, Zakir here is a cancerous lesion on the face of humanity and his religion is a disgusting in a way that can only be described as dry heave inducing propagandic barbarism. And these motherfuckers, these motherfuckers are clapping for it. This is what you fucking defend when you call people Islamophobes. This is the type of message you endorse when you coddle this religion. Fuck you and fuck them. I'm calm now. You don't sound calm. It's gonna be fine! Okay. Okay. I'm asking you the question that if you implement the Islamic Sharia, any man looks at a woman, he should lower his gaze. The woman should be modestly dressed, complete body covered, accept the face and hands up to the wrist. And after that, any man rapes any woman, capital punishment, death penalty. I'm asking you the question, will the rate of rape in America, will it increase, will it remain the same, or will it decrease? It would increase. End of story. I'm not even being funny. If somehow magically America or a country like it went from our current system to fully embracing Sharia law, the rate would fucking explode. You can't have a country that views women as property and holes to be filled and have a society that functions normally. Sorry, man. Your culture just fucking sucks. It does. I'm not... I'm not a type of person who gets all whatever. I'm not on one side or the other about cultural objectivism. Your culture fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. You suck. So I guess if Sharia is good, let's take a look at some of the laws uh, that would be implemented in Sharia. Theft is punishable by amputation of the right hand. Criticizing or denying any part of the Quran is punishable by death. Criticizing Muhammad or denying that he is a prophet is punishable by death. Criticizing or denying Allah is punishable by death. A Muslim who becomes a non-Muslim or apostasy is 
punishable by death. A non-Muslim who leads a Muslim away from Islam is punishable by death. A non-Muslim man who marries a Muslim woman punishable by death. A man can marry an infant girl and consummate that marriage when she is nine years old not punishable by death. So there's one for you, peds. Uh, and girls' clitorises should be cut, and those are Muhammad's words. So uh, now nah, I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm gonna. I'm actually just gonna go fucking eat a cheeseburger and jack off to Toby Keith album covers because now I feel real patriotic. <laughs> you don't even like Toby Keith. I don't. I'm gonna hate Fap all over that song about the Willie Nelson smoking weed and stuff. We'll stick a boot in your ass. It's the American way. Oh, that song makes me so angry. Top of your list and something else. There's DMCA now. That song legitimately makes me fucking feel gross about just everything. (laughs) But don't you remember 9-11? Right, just the fact that someone was like, I'm going to write a fucking power anthem country song about killing people. Like, Dude, I, I totally get it. Nobody's but. career did better. Actually, one other group of people did better. Toby Keith is number two on the list of people uh, th- that that really, really, uh, their career just shot into orbit because of 9-11. <laughs> number one is Dick Cheney. Rem- <laughs> Remember that scene in Borat where he's at the uh, rodeo? Mm-hmm. And he's, it's, that was a couple years after 9-11. I don't remember what year that was. And he like says five he says to the whole crowd, May George Bush drown in the blood of every man, woman, and child of Iraq. And the whole fucking crowd cheers. I feel like <laughs> th- those are the kind of non-nuanced people who like that Toby Keith song or whoever the fuck sings that. <laughs> The brown, I don't care what happens to their innocent children. It will decrease. It's a practical law. You implement the Sharia, you get results. That's the reason the least rate of rape in any country in the world, it's in Saudi Arabia. Oh, that's no fair. If the videos start making jokes, what are we here for? That's funny. I think that's the best way to tackle that, because it's like, <laughs> no, I'm not even going to fucking address that. What are you talking about? You're crazy. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's the video. You fucking happy you watch this shit? You fucking... Are you happy you watch this? You fucking... You excited about this? I'm neutral. Mm. I can't hear this guy. I, I took him off. He can't. He cannot hear me. Okay, I'll put one in. Okay. You only get one. And you're getting left ear, not even my dominant one. I st- I d- you're assuming I have something to say to you. I don't. <laughs> so, until next time, you can always follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded. And Hugo Reloaded. You can subscribe to this channel and you will get more videos. Maybe. That's how that works, generally. That's a, in a general sense, subscriptions on YouTube. Usually you receive the videos that are on there, unless YouTube fucks up again. I wonder what this channel looks like on restricted mode. It's just a fucking black screen and it says... <laughs> hurts my feelings <laughs> Anyways. uh yeah whatever patreon that's the thing fuck it Unt- i don't just that guy's a fucking moron he really is what an asshole i can't it's i it's always interesting with people like him um and other people like him i wanted to say ray comfort but i'm not putting ray comfort in the same category oh fuck no fuck ray no. comfort i would like if i had to take a cross country trip with people i hate and he and Ray Comfort's on the roster, and so is he. Uh, 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 Zakir's getting scratched the fuck off, and Ray Comfort's bumped to the top. Right, but the similarity I wanted to draw is I'm always curious how much of it is just they know they're getting paid to do this, and they know their audience eats this shit up, and how much is oh, genuine. Oh, do you see the stage that guy was on? Right, that's what I'm saying. This guy nah. must know this is fucking bullshit, right? Like, he knows. I He's gotta, so. right? I don't know. Anyway. God, I hope so. So, until next time, Hugo. Jake.
Quran reloaded. Um, and uh, I don't know if anyone uh, told you guys this, but rape is actually not an ideal thing to do. So please try and refrain from raping. That's the official TQR stance. No raping, please. Yes. See, we're, we're polite. We're fucking way out on the edge of that one. Has this guy considered just asking nicely? That's all I'm saying. Hey, hey, lady, would you would you like to have some uh, uh, sexual intercourse? I I perform cunnilingus, and then she replies, "No." And then you're like, "Okay." <laughs> and then you go and then you go have lunch or whatever you were doing. Wait, are you <laughs> see in my head, I was imagining maybe you're at like a bar. <laughs> but apparently, oh no, just, no, no! You're it approaching just, women at the grocery was, store and saying, yeah, "Would no, you like, like to come back to my aisle?" Home? Right, and she's getting like burka o's or whatever, and you, you just you're like, "I don't know, maybe we get down and dirty in the fucking dairy aisle." <laughs> Ma'am, I have been awake for four hours today, and I am ready to lick some puss. Are you on board? 